I was scrolling through Spring 2021's upcoming anime and I saw Toki Revengers, the manga of which I had heard about a while ago from a friend. Ah, who am I kidding, man? I don't have friends. So I thought that I would read it now that the show is coming up to see whether it is really good and whether it's worth making a video out of, and yeah, it is. There are some big titles this season, like My Hero of course and Nagatoro-san, but Tokyo Revengers is one that you do not want to miss out on. I started reading yesterday, and caught up. Yesterday. Not only is it utterly addicting, but it's just one of the best manga I've personally read, dealing with the very complex inner workings of gangs in Japan, and it offers a very mature story dealing with actually pretty young kids, which you wouldn't think goes really well with the topic of gangs, but it does, they work quite well together. It's quite similar to Erased in that it has time travel elements to it and that similar premise. And if you know anything about me, the Anime Culture Corner loves some good time travel. If you're into anime involving gangs, or enjoy seeing dudes being really badass and beating each other up to earn respect in rural Tokyo, or if you love emotional moments that deal with regret and love and trying to rewrite your mistakes while becoming a better man, then you will love Tokyo Revengers. And today, I'm going to talk about all of this and more, why I really do love Tokyo Revengers, and why I think that it will, hopefully, become the dark horse of Spring 2021. Like this manga has truly hit me on levels that I haven't felt in a long time. Also, if you're part of the 95% of my viewers who aren't subs, hit that button and support the channel. Let's go! Tokyo Revengers follows Takamichi, a 26 year old who's kind of let his life pass by him. He's at the lowest he's ever been, and actually peaked in middle school, which is a... Uh, that's pretty tough. And then his ex-girlfriend from middle school, Hinata, the one girl he's ever loved, is murdered by the Tokyo Manji gang, shortened and commonly called in the manga Toman, which is what I'll call it from here on out. And in the modern day, Toman is a group of criminals who have committed any and every crime you can think of, and cast a pretty dark shadow over Tokyo. But after a turn of events, not quite our good friend Truck-kun, but Train-kun this time took the spotlight. Takamichi finds himself transported 12 years in the past, in middle school, when he was still dating Hinata, and thus he uses this opportunity to make things right and try and save her, by infiltrating Tomon and rewriting history. But it's not as simple as tearing Tomon apart from the inside out, as Takamichi soon realizes that Tomon is far from the terrible organization that they are in the future. In fact, the members who run Tomon are honorable and respectable dudes bringing up the question of what went wrong. How did Tomon end up the way that they did? Could these people really be the ones who killed Hinata? And as he infiltrates, he has to unravel this mystery, while also dealing with the treachery and dangers that lie within the complex gang system in place in Tokyo. But the thing is, Takamichi isn't this like super brave dude, at the start at least. He's basically apologized through his whole life, and whimpered away from any real challenge, and so it's a really rough start for him. Like, this dude's getting beat up every single chapter. I mean, he still is towards the end, or at least where we're caught up to, but... I mean, towards the beginning, it was just completely one-sided. And so, if you don't like, you know, weaker main protagonists, who fight their way mainly through perseverance and sheer willpower, you might not like Tokyo Revengers. But to come to Takamichi's side here, because I do like him now, he does change a lot throughout the manga. He gets a really hardened resolve, and truly takes this burden and responsibility to save the future upon himself, in the way you would expect of a cool gang member, of a cool protagonist. We see these huge fist fights with dudes getting beat up left and right, and super touching bro moments really like no other. But at the same time, his story is also pretty tragic. Because the thing is, Takamichi isn't trapped in the past. He finds out that he can willingly go between the future and the past, which might initially sound just like a life hack, but it's not that simple. Because while it at first seems rather simple to stop the rise of Tomon, just tear them apart I guess, stop them before it even starts, Takamichi soon realizes that there are innumerable factors that continue to lead to the future he doesn't want. And every time he thinks he fixes it, he goes back to the future just to realize that nothing has changed, and that it might have even gotten worse, and he loses a piece of himself each time. It's very similar to Stein's Gate or ReZero if you've watched either, as there's this constant back and forth as he keeps trying to get a result but can't reach it, 
while also dealing with the consequences of changing the past. It's the butterfly effect. What he thinks might change the fate of Tomon might actually have unprecedented effects elsewhere, and so the future he goes back to are far beyond what he could even expect. And so, unlike, say, Erased, a show that has a very similar concept, this back and forth between the past and present, or future, exists, where he unravels clues to the origins of Tomon and tries to fix the future as a middle schooler, and goes back to the future to see, well, whether it's fixed. And if it's not, he has to spend time in the future seeing exactly what went wrong, and he has to fill in all the holes between the past and future, and it's just really interesting. But it doesn't really focus on that time aspect, if you're worried that it might get too complicated or it's not really up your alley. What's most important in Tokyo Revengers by far is the characters. I've already talked about Takamichi a lot, but I think similar to why I love Okabe from Steins Gate so much, is that I love characters who have to go through this very intense mental struggle as they fight on their own, and they can't explain why they're going through it because no one in that timeline would understand. And just the way that they fight through and struggle and face regret each time is so cool to me. Also, to leave the topic of Takamichi, we meet some incredibly awesome side characters as we see the inner workings of Toman and the gang members. Especially Mikey, the leader of Toman. Let me tell you, if Tokyo Revengers gets popular, as I hope it will, Mikey is going to be that boy of 2021. Like how Gojo ruled over the past six months, Mikey has that potential. Like Takamichi, the main character, he's kind of a wimp, and he can't really fight. But of course he's still great because of his determination and willingness to change and interfere with the pretty rigid and cutthroat gang system. But Mikey is like calm, collected, and also insanely strong. He's called the Invincible Mikey. He has this move where his leg swings straight up and knocks his opponent out, which is just like, oh, God. And then there's Draken and Chifuyu and Baji and Mitsuya. All of these guys have some kind of tragic and broken past that has led them to be delinquents, to be gang members. And it's this pain that brings all of Tomon together that makes them so admirable and cool, their reliance on each other and familial bond. Not the future Tomon, of course, the corrupt and really crime committing one, but the real Tomon, the original. It's something that Takamichi learns he has to preserve and find a way to maintain this very honorable group, even if they are a bunch of quote unquote delinquents. I, I love this manga. Honestly, it's up there now after reading it all yesterday with Vagabond for me. I'm not saying that it's as good as Vagabond, please don't comment like Vagabond's way better, but I've enjoyed it that much personally. But also, I have some worries, mainly the animation studio. Tokyo Revengers is being spearheaded by Lidden Films, which doesn't have the best track record. And by that, I mean, they don't have a single anime above an 8 star rating on my anime list. Which is kinda scary, considering that, you know, it's a decent sized studio with 72 anime attributed to their name. I'm not saying any show below an 8 is bad, but, you know, it's not a very good sign in general. So I am very worried that this adaptation won't get the recognition it deserves, be it because it's animated poorly or just because the manga isn't properly converted or what have you. Which would be really tragic, but if any of you are interested in manga and the anime falls flat, I do highly recommend reading it. It's awesome. I'm crossing my fingers that the adaptation is good because it could certainly become one of my favorite anime as well if it's done right. What do you guys think? Have any of you read Tokyo Revengers? Did you like it? Are you excited? Let me know. As always, this has been the Anime Culture Corner. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future in-depth show, manga, and character analyses.